Praise the Lord and good morning everyone. This is Mother Gail with Just In Case. It's Tuesday morning. New day, new month. And a new me. I got me some rest. How about you? I hope you did. Hope you enjoyed your evening. Hope you had a great day yesterday. I, I had a pretty good day. Pretty good day. Don't remember too much what I do. Oh, I know what I do. I go to a um, a Bible uh, study at Second Baptist, and uh, sometimes I procrastinate in my reading and my studying. And um, I prayed. I let God. He, the Lord knows, and I let Him know. It's not a good thing to procrastinate, to put off. I was kind of mad at myself yesterday. Why I waited so long to, to do my writing and my reading. Anyway, I got it done in the nick of time. <laughs> now, the, the, you, you don't expect the quality of anything to be done that great when you wait that long. Because you have to rush and... Uh, you know, get your thoughts together and, and type them out on paper and stuff and so forth. You know, I'm a good typist, excellent typist. But you got to get them weights together. It's them, the written weight. And unfortunately, some of us write better than we talk. Uh, and I intend to uh, continue until I can Get my thoughts together in both areas. Well, praise the Lord and good morning. I hope you're well. I'm well. I'm getting over my little, um, uh, what would you call it, a head cold. I was out in the rain, and it's uh, it was a week. And then I went to church and got on a crazy praise. That stretched my little vocal cords to the limit. <clears throat> I'm still uh, getting over it, and I'm praising God because he's a healer. He's a healer. And uh, my vocal cords are uh, progressively going back to uh, normal. And I got a song to sing, and if you don't mind, I'm going to sing it. The name of it is Under His Wings. This is May 1st. It is 9.32. It is Tuesday morning. And you are here with me. And we are getting ready to open up the Word. Just in case you didn't get a chance today. I know how it is. I know how it is. I've been there. Working, raising kids, this to do, that to do, all kinds of deadlines. But uh, if I can open up that uh, that cell phone and you know I can put it on Facebook and see somebody or talk and you know send a message, I can certainly. Just listen to the word, cause faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God, under His wings. Let's sing it. If you know it, sing along with me. It's an old one. Under His wings, I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild. Still I can trust him, I know he will keep me, he has redeemed me and I am his child. Forgive me. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever, under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abiding, 
forever. Third verse. Under his wings, O oh, precious enjoyment, there will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from my love, from his love can sever. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. I haven't sang that song in years. Have you? Have any of you ever heard of it? I know we used to sing it years ago. It's by Mr. William O. Cushing. Hingham Ira D. Sankey. And uh, Under His Wings was um, written after the uh, writer read Psalm 17, hide me, 17 and 8, hide me under the shadow of his wings. Let me tell you something, but before I tell you something, I'm going to pray. Precious Lord, you're so good, so mighty, and I love you. I ask you to please forgive me. Forgive me, please, for all unrighteousness. Forgive us, Lord of all of our transgressions. Thank you, Father God, that we can call on you and ask you for strength and wisdom. Ask you, Lord Jesus, to have your way, Father God, and, and to stand on your word, knowing that you are able and will answer our prayers. So, Father God, bless us, enlarge our territory, oh, that your hand would be upon us, Keep us from evil and that we might not cause pain in Jesus' name. Well, I got to tell you something. What are you going to do today, anyway? Well, I got plans. And, and the Lord has plans. Did you know that our steps are ordered by the Lord? So all of our plans and all of our... You know, our, our little steps that we are going to take are all ordered by the Lord. It's up to Him. It's up to Him. And I hope you have a beautiful day today. But in order to have a beautiful day, we need to stay in His Word. So, let's turn to one, uh, Psalms 130, 1-6. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the psalmist. His name was David. And David was a man after God's own heart. David was real. He was a warrior king. Now, some of David's attributes were as follows. He was a good man. He was a strong man. He was not bad to look at, but he was a stocky guy. He could handle himself well in any kind of battle. He was capable of great evil, David. And uh, whether we know it or not, we are capable of great evil. Oh, yes, we are. Without uh, meaning to, we can... Let our mouths cause harm. Our hands, our feet are swift to shed blood. Uh, we, we can go from being a good woman to a bad woman in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. 
without uh, the Lord on our sides. And when you don't have the Lord in your life, you are uh, a sitting duck for the wiles of the enemy. So David was just like us, capable of doing great evil. We can do it. He had strong passions and strong feelings. Strong passions. When he wanted something, he went out after it. I like David. Just, just, just a go-getter. You know, a go-getter who wasn't satisfied uh, walking in, in the lower places, the, the, the sinful areas. You know, I heard our, our pastor say, the Lord made us from the uh, dirt of the earth, the, the clay of the earth. But he didn't let us stay in the earth, you know. Because you're made of dirt, you don't have to wallow around in it. He made us in his image. He gave us a uh, he gave us a work to do, like he gave Adam, gave him work to do, gave Eve work to do, told her what to do. He had strong feelings. David would often. Um, get happy and dance. David would cry and, and he would become uh, saddened. The Bible says so. Read those Psalms and see if you can't relate. I mean, he, he was a man after God's own heart. He, he let God in on it. When he was uh, in trouble, he let the Lord know. Uh, when he was in love, he wrote about it. He, he went after who he shouldn't have gone after, but that was part of his uh, uh, makeup. Had strong feelings. You know, it's nice to have strong feelings, but it's nice to have some wisdom behind it. And the wisdom that uh, David soon learned was the knowledge of God. And that's the beginning of wisdom. The word says so. Um, David's makeup, his character, because he was young. He was a good man. He was capable of evil. He was, had strong passions and feelings. Those emotions, when they're in the wrong arena, in your fleshly uh, understanding can drag you down deep into sin, okay? Uh, the desire to be loved can drag you, whatever the enemy does, he seems to take it out of context, you know? We have, uh, all people desire to be loved, but when we uh, use it, and, and it becomes a physical, it's, it becomes uh, perverted after a while uh, because the flesh takes hold and you never satisfy this flesh, never. Uh, seven erotic minutes, hallelujah, yeah they're real, but uh, where it takes you to hunger and thirst after what this body craves will uh, take you deep into some pits of hell. Sinful pits. Sinful pits. And leave you with a residue. You will remember where you have been. Not only hurt emotions, but some I have uh, uh, contracted illnesses illnesses.
He also had a great light of understanding, this psalmist. He wrote the 130th Psalm, and we're going to read it in a minute from uh, verses 1 through 6. He would be dragged, David would be dragged into the pit by some of his, you know, the strong feelings and emotions that he had. But while he was in that pit, he had great understanding of how he had gotten in there, why he was in there, and faith in who was in there with him. Okay? There are pits we can get into in life when we don't re we don't know how we're going to get out. You say to yourself, if I ever come back from this mess, I'll never ask Mother Gail how many times. Perils of Pauline. Well, he dragged himself, uh, many times he would be dragged into this deep pit of sin, and he did, you know, after a while. Now, he'd have to stay in this pit a while, because that sin will bring you down. It does. You're doing things you never thought you would ever do. Things that you boasted to others that you would never do. And, um, while he was in that pit, there was only one uh, entity he knew to deliver him. And he would go to that entity, entity which was his Heavenly Father. Um, he found out about God's great love for him while he was in these pits. David David got in all kinds of circumstances. Sound kind of familiar. He wasn't a guy that stood still. He was a guy that was interested in this and interested in that and, and, and went for it. Fought for it. And sometimes his own uh, uh, intellect and his own uh, mind would get him in a lot of trouble. Well, let's start because uh, uh, here we go. We have it here. We have it in front of us. Psalms 130. It's a song of degrees. A song of degrees or a song of ascent when you're ascending. Ascending, going up. Descending, going down. Ascent. Um, when David was in these pits, he he would write songs of praise to God. Songs of praise, songs of prayer. Hallelujah. He put his prayers to songs. And that can be done. David was hoping and waiting for the Lord to get him out of this, uh, deliver him while he was in this particular pit. And um, David wrote, uh, he looked around actually, he didn't write, wait a minute, before I get to the writing, he looked around while he was in the pit for lesser lights things that might help him, but maybe they would. But his longing was to know God. So these lesser things would not bring him out the way God would. These lesser things. Sometimes I, I remember in my uh, youth while I was uh, out there and, and uh, Living vicariously, so that's a two dollar word. I would um, get caught up in certain things, uh, in people, 
and the person was a lesser light. You know, in my heart it started out, yeah, oh, it, it, wonderful, wonderful. This is a wonderful catch here. But he wasn't whom my soul wanted. My soul wanted the the great light, that great power, that holiness, that cleanliness to pick me up out of the muck and the mire that I had fallen into. Um, God, I knew God had strength. I knew there was power in the name of the Lord because I had been taught that. And, and I knew God would not forsake me. I knew I had forsaken him, but he wouldn't forsake me. Let's get to the word. Hoping and waiting for the Lord. Out of, this is what David wrote, out of the depths, and we're going to read the first to the sixth verse. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord. More than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Isn't that something? That, that says a lot. He, he's realizing he sinned. But there's forgiveness in God. Okay? We must realize that some of the pits that we get in are, are our own making. We, we, we go down their eyes open, and they're our own making. And, and while we're in these pits, the enemy talks to us and tells us, This is where you will remain. This is where you belong. You can't help yourself. This is why you were born. I mean, some people can, but you can't. You hear all kinds of, uh, how would you say, suggestions by the enemy. But David was real. He was real with God. Lord, I'm in a pit. I'm in a rut. This is not where you would have me. This is some place that I got caught up in while I was off on a, one of those uh, tangents. And don't we get caught up and lost in, in, in sin when we're off on a tangent. And each time the level goes a little bit lower and lower and lower. I, I remember as a young woman, I would meet, uh, I would meet men whose morals were lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, and and uh, <coughs> excuse me, you found that out by the words that came from their mouth and their actions, you know. And you, 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 you said, well, gee, guess I'll walk with you a while and see how it is down there. But you know they're descended, you know, their character descended. And there was, there is not, um, but there is not a, a level that men will not descend to in the mind. The enemy will take you lower and lower and lower and lower. And uh, because you desire love, which is a fictitious uh, kind of love because it's perverted, you will walk with them down into the lower and sacrifice your soul's peace and joy and, and, and happiness 
because you you're being deceived well David wrote Lord if you were to mark iniquities oh Lord who would stand I mean I ain't the only one you out there have you been to those pits have you met people of lesser moral standing lesser holiness in their lives God is not mentioned hmm? oh, I bet you have let's be real and along their way down they take you by the hand and you walk with them well when you get to the bottom of the pit you know, and I know, that hope is just waiting for your attention. You begin to hope in God. Lord, I hope I can get out of this. Lord, can you fix my mind and turn me around? Mm. Can you deliver me? I know you can. You did it before. If I ever get out of this, I'll never do that again. You know how we do. And by God's grace, and by his mercy, and as we wait, right, we wait for the Lord. As our souls wait, many of us ascend, and we don't get a chance to come back because while we're in that uh, pit, some people lose their minds. They, they completely give their minds over to the enemy. They become reprobated. There's no God in their life. They lose their hope. They lose their way. They actually lose their mind. And those that do lose their minds most of the time, they have never been acquainted with the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you are in your right mind and you are down in a pit somewhere of your own doing, there is a light. If you're down in a pit and it was not your doing and you're down there and you need help, Okay, do as David did. Wait. And while you're waiting, hope in his word. Well, by the way, Lisa Samra spoke about uh, waiting in anticipation. Lisa says on May 1st, in Oxford, England, there's a choir that raises up early in the morning along with a bunch of people and they come to uh, welcome the first day of spring, which is May 1st for them in Oxford, England. Uh, this choir sings on the top of uh, the tower and thousands wait in anticipation for the dark of the night to burst into the day. Like these people, we wait, she writes. We wait for answers to prayers, from, uh, guidance from the Lord. Uh, we don't know when it, the, our daylight is coming. We don't know uh, exactly what time is going to end. But uh, we know that while we're in the distress of darkness and it feels like the blackest of night and you're down there and you can't hear that's what I call it. when you're down and you can't hear nobody pray she writes that this is when we must trust in God we have to stay alert we know he's coming to get us. But while we're waiting, he's uh, working things out in us, working 
obedience. We're learning to obey while we're in the pit. I have many pits I've been into in my life where I said, Lord, I'll never do this again. And many times, I meant it. Sometimes I slipped up and messed up, fell over again. But, excuse me, most of the time in the pits that I've been in, I meant it. I meant it. And I, by the grace of God, he has helped me to stay out of that pit. Never to return again. Now, there's been temptations for me to, to slip up. But by prayer, asking God for his strength and his deliverance and his clarity and to move that out of my way, I have been able to endure my trials. We anticipate God's faithfulness breaking through that darkness. We know God's going to come get us. We know that. We know that's the kind of God we have, the kind of Father, Abba, Father. And he loves us, and he hears our cry. Be encouraged. If you're in a dark night, like uh, it's, it's a time of, of sadness, a time of loss, a time of where you don't see the light of day. The dawn's coming. It's coming. And once you have hung in there and, and, and gotten to that light of day, you're going to bring with you some new found wisdom and strength. He uses our darknesses to bring us to the light. Mm. I get the vapors. Oh, stop. Oh, God bless you. God keep you. Name, I love you. David, Tiffany and Arthur, Dawana, to love all my grandbabies. God bless you. Love my pastor. Pastor's wife. Pastor's mama. I love you. All my student friends at Second Baptist. Hallelujah. Ain't he good? Just in case. <laughs>